everyone and welcome to this week's TA and SSA training. This week we are going to be looking at number and place value. However, things will be slightly different this week as I've split the sessions up into three. So today I will be doing the key stage one number and place value session and then later on in the week I will be uploading lower key stage two and upper key stage two. So let's begin with looking at year one. So in year one, children will work with numbers up to 100, and that will include counting on or back from any number within 100, and in steps of 1, 2, 5, or 10. And this is including reading and writing numerals, that's numbers, to 100, and number names to 20 in words, using objects and number lines to represent numbers, as well as finding one more and one less than any number. So looking at numbers to 100 first of all. So it's important that children in year one know the numbers up to 100. Um, and that's counts, being able to count within there from counting up in twos, fives and tens from any given number. So that's not just starting at zero or starting at that given number. So it wouldn't be just counting up in twos from two. It could be, for example, counting up in twos from three, counting up in twos from seven, counting up in twos from 28. And the same for four fives and tens. And it's also important that when you are teaching children and supporting children about numbers up to 100, that they are able to recognise patterns within those numbers. So it would be your job to help identify them and point them out for children. So for example, multiples of five always end in a five or a zero. So as you're counting up in fives, you'll be able to recognise that. Now on here, I've just put three number grids and on the number grids, I've highlighted in the darker color and counting up in twos, fives or tens. So that will be multiples of two, multiples of five and multiples of 10. So now we're going to be looking at numbers in words, on a number line and objects. So the next couple of slides will be looking at those. So not only do children need to know the numbers 0 to 100 in numerals, so that's in numbers in digits, it's important that the children can write and spell relatively correctly, spell correctly, numbers 1 to 20 in words. So it's important that as you're teaching and supporting the children in that, that you are correcting those spellings and helping them um, spell the words correctly. So I've just put the examples there on the left for you to see. Now I've put two number lines on here. One is a horizontal number line, so it's going that way, and one is a vertical number line, which is going that way. And it's important that children see number lines in different representations. Otherwise, they're going to come across one one day and not know what, what to do with it. So on here, um, it's important that children can use these number lines to find and represent a number, as well as using it to support them in finding one more or one less than any given number. So for example, if you were working on a horizontal number line and you wanted to find one more than 11, it would be useful for children to find 11 on the number line. And then you would say, okay, do we need to count on one? Do we need to move forward? Do we, would that add one more? Or would we need to count backwards? Well, that would add one less. And it's the same for the um, vertical number line, moving either jumping down or jumping up. Now on here, I've also put the Numicon number line because it's important that children can see the numbers as objects as well. So it's important that we can see the, um, the concrete, or in this case, pictorial representations of the numbers. So like I was talking about then for objects representing numbers, um, it's important that children know and that you show children that objects can, so many different objects can be used to represent numbers. So for example, on here, I've put the example 31. So 31 can be represented in num numerous, numerous ways. It can be represented as 31 individual ones, or it could be represented as three groups of 10 and one on its own. You could then create drawings to represent what they've made physically. So for example, if you've made them using counters or cubes or pencils in class, you can then use that to create a drawing for children. So on here, we've, I've got the three circle symbols which represent a 10 and the one line on its own which represents the one. Now I've also put, for example, on here, the dinosaurs, counters, classroom objects, anything in the room can be used to count. Quite often in early years, you'll see uh, things like teddy bear counters and stuff like that. So it's really important that children are using these physical concrete objects to count and represent numbers. We've also got resources like Numicon. We've also got resources like Base 10 and the Tens frame. 
Now, it's also important that children can draw but their own drawings and pictures to represent numbers, but also be able to see and recognise given drawings and pictures to represent numbers. So, for example, on here, where it's with the apples, that is a given um, picture that has been given maybe in a test or in a question. And it's important that children are able to count either in groups of three or count individually on there to work out how many um, objects there are, so therefore what that number represents. So it's a good idea to use a range of different objects just to expose the children to as many different representations as you possibly can. Now we're going to be looking at language. So for example, when you're using the word fewer for your count um, in a maths lesson, it's important that you use that when working with objects that can be counted, whereas we would use the words less when working with abstract numbers. Okay, so it's important that you're modelling this correct use of language because it's something that the children will see um, later on in the school and things they'll hear later in the school. And obviously we know that children will um, magpie, mirror, hoppy, um, the language that you use and the language that you're modelling. So for example, on here, I've got, I have three fewer sweets than you. So in this case, you could have piles of sweets in front of you and the children and you can physically see that you can count them and see the difference between them. Whereas on the second example, I've put there is less water in the glass than in the bottle. Because we're not going to go and start counting individual molecules of water and seeing which has got less the water in the glass um, or the water in the bottle. But we can see by eye that there is less water in the glass than the bottle. Now we should also refer to the equal sign as equal to rather than the same as. Now I know quite often people say, oh, it means the same thing. But it's important that we use the really correct technological language, the mathematical vocabulary, and this just avoids any misconceptions being taught and any confusion or ambiguity later on in the other year groups. So let's have a look at year two. So in year two, children will now start to be recognising the tens and ones in two digit numbers. So for example, 23 has two tens and three ones. They will also be able to order numbers up to 100. So whereas previously in year one, it was recognising numbers up to 100. Now in year two, children are expected to order them in the correct order. And it also includes counting in steps of one, two, three, five and ten, using more than, less than and equal symbols to compare numbers and using place, fact, uh, place value and number facts to solve problems. So using everything that they've learned to solve number problems. So for example, counting in steps on here. So we've already said that in year two, children should be able to count up in ones, in twos, in threes, in fives, and in tens from any given number. Now, obviously there is some repetition from year one, but this time we've included the counting up in threes. So on the right hand side, you'll be able to see the slightly larger number grid. And that's what I've just highlighted, the multiples of three. So that's counting up in threes, but that's from um, starting at zero or starting from three. And like I said in the previous section, it's important that children can um, count up from any given number. So it might be count starting at five and counting up in threes. It might be starting at 33, which is obviously a multiple of three, and counting up in threes. So it's important that we do um, counting or skip counting, it's sometimes known as, in many different ways, starting from lots of different numbers. And the repetition, and the more we do it, the more confident the children will be in doing so. So on here, we are now looking at two digit numbers. So if you look over on the left hand side, I've got the number 13 and I've split that number 13 into tens and ones and I've put the place value headings above the top. Now we know in the past we used to use the term units, but it's really important that we're using the term ones now. Okay, and underneath I have partitioned that uh, number 13 to show that the three in the ones column represents three, but the one in the tens column actually represents 10. Okay, and as I was talking about before, when we we're looking at different counters and ways to represent numbers, it's really important that we continue to do so. So on here, I've just put a few examples of different ways that we can represent the number 13. So on the top, we've identified it in a number line and that's either it can already be pre-identified or the children can identify it, you can do it together. Underneath that, we are using tens and ones counters. So obviously these are all pictures of resources, but you will have the um, concrete resources that you can use in class. I've also put the Numicon there at the bottom. We have got um, 
arrow cards so which is the blue and the yellow towards the bottom left corner and they can be split and pulled apart to show that the one represents the ten and the three represents three we've also got some more partitioning where we're using base 10 so underneath the 13 we're also using the 10 frame on the, the middle right hand side and then on the far right we are using some more base 10 again. Now obviously you can choose to represent numbers in many many different ways. It can be with drawings, it can be with jottings, it can be with cubes, counters. So please remember to um, allow children to explore and use lots of lots of different resources to represent different numbers. And now we're going to be looking at more or greater than less than and equals to. Okay, and children will be using these to be able to put numbers in order, be able to compare them from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Okay, and this is a technique that I've used um, through, throughout my throughout teaching and it's using the hungry crocodiles so it's something that's a nice um fun way to help children remember so i always say the hungry crocodile always eats the bigger number so it's important that the mouth the wider bit um symbol is the greater than symbol so we can see that that um the wider bit is always pointing to the bigger number Okay, so we've got a couple of examples on here. We can see that the six blue fish is greater than the three green fish. We can see that the one bumblebee is less than the four ladybirds. Now obviously on here there's more ladybirds, so the hungry crocodile is eating the more ladybirds because it's a bigger number. And at the bottom, as we said before, we are looking at the words equal to. So the five red birds are equal to the five blue birds. So it's just making sure that you're really confident in knowing which way is greater than and less than and being able to support children in that. So thank you very much. Um, it's been a very quick session. Obviously, we've just been looking at years one and year two. Like I said, later on in the week, we will be looking at years three and four and then moving on to years five and six. So thank you very much for watching this session. I hope you found it very useful. Um, I know a lot of it in there you'll think is quite obvious, um, but it's just can be used as a reminder to refresh you and just so you know what is expected for each year group. So like I said, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to complete the form which I'll be posting um, with the videos. My email address is on here if you need to contact me for any more information. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next sessions.